Welcome back to the channel. Boosters don't work in people who've already had COVID-19. This is a new paper out from John Ioannidis and colleagues. It comes out in the European Journal of Clinical Investigation and not the Journal of Obvious Things because it would be obvious that boosters don't work in people who had COVID-19. This is a new observational study. Let me walk you through this. I've written about it on my Substack, Vinay Prasad's Observations and Thoughts. It's a very interesting study. First, what do you need to know? Well, because the US FDA was derelict on their duties, they did not compel the manufacturers of these vaccine products to run a randomized control trial each year to know in whom the booster works. We also did not make the companies run randomized trials in people who have already had and recovered from COVID-19 to prove that by vaccinating those people, they get an additional reduction in severe disease or hospitalization. We didn't make the companies do that. And that is a failure of the US FDA primarily, also a failure of the European Medicines Agency. Instead of that, we use observational studies to make inferences about how well these vaccine products work. The problem is observational studies are biased. The people who choose and rush out to get the latest booster are different than those who don't rush out to get the latest booster. So there's more difference than just getting the booster. There's the confounding by the type of person who goes out and gets the booster. And that's often called the healthy vaccinee bias, that a person who's health crazed, who's very precautious, they're going to rush out and get it before somebody who's not. In the booster scenario here, it's gotten to a new extreme where I think only the most deranged person is rushing out to get the newest booster when they're like a 20 year old or 30 year old, for instance. And so it's gonna be a huge bias in terms of their other behavioral differences. Some analyses have actually shown the healthy vaccine effect is profound. There was a paper by the Israeli group, they published in the New England Journal that boosters work. In a letter to the editor, they showed that it had a 95% reduction in all cause death. Tracy Beth Hogg, Ram Durasetti, and myself, we saw that. We said, that's so implausible. We wrote a subsequent research letter in the New England Journal arguing that this is clear evidence of a healthy vaccine bias that's been published in the journal. I've talked about it on my channel. If the booster is lowering car accidents or preventing you from dying from heart disease or cancer, that's not the booster doing that. That's the fact that the booster is not given to the same types of people who didn't get the booster. The booster is given to different people than who, got the bo than who didn't get the booster. That's confounding, okay? So this new observational study comes from Austria. And the beautiful thing about this study is that they just focus on people who've already had and recovered from COVID-19, which is most people at this point. And what they find very clearly is that boosters do not reduce the risk of COVID-19 death in people who've already had COVID-19. And that really means that the annual booster campaign is defunct. It has no value and it shouldn't be perpetuated without better data. It is a giveaway to Pfizer, but it's not actually making people better off. All right, so number one, these authors also find that their paper has a healthy vaccine bias, but it's something on the order of about 21% and not the 95% in Israel. So there's an all-cause mortality benefit from getting boosting. That's implausible. They think that's a bias, but it's more modest than in Israel where the bias was tremendous. I gotta also say, these really authors, the fact they didn't publish the overall mortality in the original paper, and we only found that out in the, in the letter to the editor, that speaks very poorly, I think, of the authors and the journal that they didn't compel that information in the original publication. The authors of this Austria paper, they look to see whether or not getting a booster prevents you from testing positive for COVID-19. And here they find very similar to other papers that there is a short, transient, and small effect. They write, quote, we observed a small vaccine effectiveness of a fourth vaccine dose um, with, for getting symptomatic, sorry, for getting testing positive for COVID-19 with evidence for rapidly waning immunity and the reversal of this effect in 2023. In other words, it don't last, okay? It's very transient at best. Now, some people say there's a value of boosting people for this transient reduction in testing positive. Those people are deranged. There's no way that's possible. Boosting a tiny fraction of people for a tiny difference in two month rates of getting COVID-19 that's gonna wash away in the future, that's not gonna make a lick of difference in the universe of transmission, okay? I've talked about that on this channel many times, including my last video on boosters. It's so implausible. It would be having the arrogance to say the forest fire is raging towards your house. I'm gonna pour a glass of water on the lawn and hopefully this will prevent it from burning my house. It's not gonna make a lick of difference. Next, the authors acknowledge that just testing positive for COVID-19 doesn't even mean you're sick. They write, quote, positive laboratory tests for SARS-CoV-2 with unclear and probably no adverse consequences for most individuals, even hospitalized patients in an endemic phase, that these can be nothing burgers, that this is a nothing burger finding. And so instead they come to the more important finding, did the people who get boosted 
were they less likely to die of COVID-19? They write, quote, we did not observe a significant vaccine effect, vaccine effect of a fourth vaccine dose for COVID-19 deaths during a time with already very low absolute risk for this outcome and, quote, no individual younger than 40 died due to COVID-19. In other words, COVID-19, it's not killing anybody under the age of 40. There's absolutely no reduction in COVID-19 death from getting the booster in people who've already had COVID-19. That really undermines the claim that boosters somehow protect you against severe disease from getting COVID-19 once you've had it. The authors point out that their study is in line with Qatar, which shows durable natural immunity. By that, I mean that once you have COVID and recover from COVID, you're less likely to get severely ill and not what Seth MacFarlane thinks that anytime you get COVID again, that's a failure of natural immunity. It's not. You're going to get COVID many, many times, no matter what you do. This study shows that. Life shows that. The question is, are you going to get really, really sick? This study shows once you've got it and cleared it, you're never going to get really, really sick from it again. And nobody under the age of 40 died in this data set. Here's how the authors conclude. The lack of effectiveness of the fourth vaccination during 2019, 2023 of our study is consistent with the notion of rapidly waning immunity of this second bivalent booster. Our findings do not apply to people who have not been infected, a population that is, quote, vanishingly small by late 2023. And that's absolutely right. That's vanishingly small. So there are a few more gems. One, they find that the case fatality rate among the people who tested positive for COVID-19, how many died? It was 0.08%, okay? Eight one-hundredths of 1%. Remember when WHO put out the initial estimate, it was 3.4%, and that's when everyone panicked back in 2020. Now it's eight one-hundredths of 1%. That's the case fatality rate. The infection fatality rate is even lower because there's a huge denominator you're missing. What's the overall picture here? The overall picture here is that this observational study, if anything, it was biased towards finding an effect for boosters when none existed. And despite that bias, it found no effect of boosters, that boosters do not improve COVID-19 death rates. There's a transient effect on testing positive, which is a useless endpoint that doesn't even mean you're sick. This severely undermines the US policy. It severely undermines the FDA's regulatory negligence of approving the booster year after year in people who've had COVID-19 without any evidence that they're better off as a result. This is an extremely provocative paper, and I think it's worth your time. So it's entitled, Effectiveness of a Fourth SARS-CoV-2 Vaccine Dose in Previously Infected Individuals from Austria. And I encourage you to read it. All right, those are my thoughts. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm now on Instagram. You can follow me there. DM me your thoughts on Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos on health policy and things of that nature. So until next time.